In classical physics, a lot of the time, we deal with two or more reference frames. So that's exactly why it becomes very important to be able to transform quantities that describe an object or an event taking place from one reference frame to a second different reference frame. And these types of transformations are known as Galilean transformation. So a Galilean transformation is basically a mathematical method of transforming a quantity or an equivalent quantity from one inertial frame to a second different inertial frame. So in this lecture we're going to derive the Galilean transformation equations that will allow us to transform the position of an object or an event from one frame to a second frame. So let's begin by supposing that we have two inertial reference frames F1 and F2 that each consist of a set of axes X, Y, and Z. So this is the coordinate plane of frame F1 and this is the coordinate frame of F2. Now, to gain a bit more intuition about what is actually taking place, consider the following analogy. Let's suppose we have a car and that car is resting on a road. Now the road is reference frame 1 given by F1 and the space inside that car is reference frame F2. Now initially the car is at rest on the road and that means initially the the car is found in the same position as the road. So at a time of zero seconds, the two coordinate planes are found at the same exact position, that is, they coincide. But as time increases, as time progresses, the car begins to move, let's say, to the right along the x-axis. And that means this entire plane, this entire frame given by F2 also moves moves to the right. Now let's assume that the velocity of the car is very low compared to the speed of light. So that means we're dealing with classical physics. And in classical physics, time is an absolute quantity. Time is the same in both reference frames. Now, let's suppose at some time given by T2 that takes place inside reference frame F2, some type of event takes place at a position x2, y2, x2. So this is the coordinate point that describes the location of the event that takes place inside that car, inside reference frame F2. Now, what exactly is this event? Well, the event could be any event whatsoever. Let's suppose the event is the person inside the car turning on the radio. So the person inside the car, inside reference frame F2, turns on the radio at a time of T2 and the position of the car is given by this coordinate point inside this reference frame F2. Now the question that we want to ask and answer is the following. What will be the coordinate point of that same point, that same event, but in reference frame F2? F1. So we basically want to derive the equations that will allow us to make that transformation from reference frame F2 from the car to reference frame F1 to that road. So let's begin by looking at the following before and after diagram. Now before, at a time of zero seconds, these two coordinate planes, these two frames were on top of one another. They coincided, they were superimposed because we began at the same exact position. The car was at rest on the road. So that means these two planes are found superimposed. 
So we have axis X1 and X2, we have axis Y1 and Y2, and we have axis Z1 and Z2. Now at a time given by T2, the car has moved a certain distance to the right along the X axis. So it's moving with some velocity, and that means the second coordinate plane, the second frame given by F2, has also moved to the right along the X axis. So this is frame F1 and this is frame F2, the car and the road. So once again, as time progresses, reference frame F2 moves to the right with the velocity V while F1, the road, remains stationary. Now, after time T2 has passed within reference frame 2 within the car, F2, the car, has moved to the right along the x-axis, a distance given by V multiplied by T2. So we take the velocity of the car and multiply it by the time inside that car, and that gives us this entire distance. So basically, this entire distance from this point all the way to this point is given by V multiplied by T2. Now, what about this distance? Well, this distance is simply given by X2. It's this distance here. Notice that the car only moves along the X axis. And that basically means the Y coordinate and the Z coordinate will remain exactly exactly the same. The car did not move up or down and the car did not move out or inward. It only moved to the right. The frame only moved to the right along the x-axis. So that means our transformation equations will be as follows. So the point Z2 on coordinate plane F2 will be exactly the same as Z1, the point on frame F1. And likewise, Y1 will be the same as Y2. But what will happen to X1? So X1 basically moved this entire distance from this location all the way to this location. So what happens to X2? So so x2 moved this entire distance, which is given by v multiplied by t2 and plus this distance. So x2 plus v times t2 gives us x1. So, these are the three equations that we call the Galilean transformation equations for position of our object or event. Now, these equations give us the position of the event in reference frame F1, knowing the coordinate points of reference frame F2. Now, what about this last equation? So, this last equation comes from the fact that we're dealing with classical physics. In classical physics, time is an absolute quantity, and that means the time inside the car, inside reference frame F2, is equivalent to the time in reference frame F1. So T2 is actually equal to T1. So once again, since we are dealing with classical physics, time is an absolute quantity. That is, the time in each frame is exactly the same. Whatever the quantity of time that has elapsed inside the car is the same quantity of time that has elapsed on the land, on that road.